There are 670 million people on Earth who need glasses, but can't afford them, or don't have access to them, or both. That's almost 10% of the world's population. In the developing world, glasses mean you can continue to work, you can continue to drive safely, you can continue to read and thread a needle, you can, continue, you can succeed at school, and you can see the faces of those you're talking to, which of course is a fundamental aspect of all human interaction. Those of you wearing glasses and contacts today, imagine what your life would be like if they were taken away from you, with no hope of ever getting them back. For these reasons, gla bringing glasses to those in need delivers a very high societal return on investment. Solving the problem means only three things. A means to determine a prescription, generally a eye exam from a trained professional, access to an affordable frame, and access to a lens that fits both the frame and your prescription. To date, there have been four genres of solutions, which I call give a man a fish solutions, teach a man a fish solutions, rethinking what the fish is solutions, and creating replicable fishing schools. Give a man a fish solutions involve missions conducted by religious, medical, and optical groups, organizations like Medical Missions International, VASH, One Sight, Unite for Sight. They bring uh, used glasses from the developed world to the developing world. These groups are enhanced by, missions are enhanced by Lions Club, which collects used glasses from around the world and categorizes them and distributes them, and by an organization called Vision, uh, uh, RestoringVision.org, which collects new readers and sunglasses from industry, discontinued readers and sunglasses, and distributes them to mission goers as well. The mission, uh, missions have been the most effective way to date of getting glasses on faces. But it's a highly inefficient model. It's a highly inefficient use of resources. There's, it leaves behind no infrastructure in the country. It's a pure charity model. Uh, but millions of people can see today because of used glasses they received from mission goers. As importantly, mission work has been the inspiration for most of the leaders in the field uh, to devote themselves to longer range solutions. Teach a Man of Fish solutions have involved building clinics and training people to staff them. These are very impressive organizations. However, there are not nearly enough of them. They're costly. They tend to be surgery focused, and there's been no scale achieved in the, in the uh, building of these. Uh, the, the clinic model has not found its McDonald's formula. The clinic model has been enhanced recently by a new not-for-profit group called Frames for the World that collects overstock frames from industry that would otherwise be destroyed and gives them to not-for-profit clinics around the world. Rethinking what a fish is involves three technological solutions. The first is one discussed by Professor Josh Silver at TED Global in 2009, something called AdLens. It's a round pair of glasses where you dial in your prescription, sort of like you dial in uh, your vision on binoculars. These are currently in a pilot program in Rwanda. There's a type of glasses called Alvarez glasses that are from the same company, another dial-in uh, prescription model, just not involving a round lens. Uh, and the newest uh, entrant is something called Quexta, which is a means to both determine a prescription and stamp out lenses on site without even the need for electricity. The Quexta technology is still in its prototype stage. Creating replicable fishing schools uh, 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 involves a group called Vision Spring, which is a social enterprise that trains vision entrepreneurs to sell exams, readers, and glasses in a micro-consignment model uh, that both creates jobs and develops local infrastructure, very much like the uh, health huts, not hospitals, that Raj was just talking about. Vision Spring has had success in pilots to date in El Salvador, Bangladesh, and India, and is currently selling hundreds of thousands of pairs of glasses a year in those markets. 
I'm very pleased by the fact that there are many groups attacking this problem, because a problem this vast involving so many people in so many countries will require a variety of solutions. But I'm hopeful that at future TED conferences, we'll be able to tell the story of how charitable one-off missions distributing recycled glasses evolved to self-sustaining, profitable businesses uh, selling low-cost eyeglasses to base of the pyramid uh, consumers. Because if we are successful at achieving this wildly ambitious goal, we will have made a massive impact on the quality of life of 10% of the world's population and consequently, no doubt, the other 90% as well. Thank you.